And I want all of us to arise. And together, we are going to welcome the speaker of the word this morning, our sister, Heron Mukasa. One more time, celebrate our sister. Amen. When you remember when you are about to give the hug, you move back, okay? And by the way, do they resemble? You see? They are relatives. Buenas <laughs> Yeah, that is part of my family. Those two are my daughters. You may have your seats. My name, as you have heard, is Helen Mukasa. Anything that you have heard that is not Helen Mukasa is a nickname. If you want to get to know the details, you can see me later, and we can discuss and give and have the details. I don't know if there is any other member of my family in the house. Oh, yeah, there is the owner of the name Mukasa. Amen. I know there is one in Sunday school and the rest are elsewhere. I am a member of this church and a daughter of this church, and I'm saying that very intentionally. Being a member and a daughter, those are two different things. You can live with a house girl for five, ten years. She's part of that family, but she's not a daughter. Sinikweli. So I'm a member of this church, and I'm a daughter of this church. My immediate family, you've seen some of them. I also have another family in this church called Mount Zion. That's my home cell. Then I have a larger family called Bethel. That's our zone. Then I have this family called DCIKZ. So you are all my relatives. I also have another family called Ladies Group Number 40. I have another family. Yeah, that's part of my, that small family. There's a family we came from. You know, when you become of age, unaambiwa enda utafute. I saw Sister Rose Sikuku somewhere, yeah. She's the one who mentored me into the ladies' ministry, so Ladies Group Number 22 is also part of my family, amen. So you see, I'm part of this church, Ndani, Ndani, Ndani. <laughs> then I have another family. I can see Brother Sam Duo there. That family is called School of Leaders. <laughs> That's also part of my family. Today, I have intentionally put on this way because we are talking about patriotism, and this is my Bible, just to prove that I am this patriotic, that I also read a Bible that is patriotic like me. <laughs> and what is patriotism? When the national anthem is being sung, you stand at attention. At 6 a.m. when the flag is going up, you stand at attention. At 6 p.m. when the flag is coming down, you stand at attention. As a Kenyan, you are expected to know the national anthem, the three stanzas, Wangapi Wanazijua Zote. As an East African, you are expected to know the East African anthem. There are so many things that you are expected to do if you are patriotic Kenyan. And there is the doing part to show that you are patriotic and there is the actual part. I'm, I'm going to give you an example because it's in the public domain. And it's not, not very long ago. Some two people saw a child drowning. A, 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 about seven, ten-year-old girl in Huruma. And this lady and Boda Boda rider, they took this child, saved her life, and rushed her to Mama Lucy. And the border border rider gave handed over this child to the hospital authorities. 
So when he was coming back to get his border border, what happens? Anambiwa, you have parked in the wrong place. And the person telling him this is in uniform. Anawambia indu diyako haifa ikwe hapa. Umepak paligari ndiyo hupak. And he says, nilikuwa nafanya nini na okolea. I was saving a life. And what happens? This man in uniform who is expected to be very patriotic. They disagree on what? A bribe. Leta tu kafinje na uende. And he says, si na chochote ndiyo naenda kutafuta. And he's shot. The little child who was taken to hospital is fighting for her life. The border border man who rescued that life is lying dead. And a patriotic person is standing. Among these two, the border border rider and the police officer, who is patriotic? Patriotism is not what you do. It is the way you live your lifestyle. So today we are going to look at how we can be patriotic in church. And that is called churchriotism. Tuko na bulletin sisi wote? Yeah, we are going to go through some things and we are going to see whether as members of this church we are churchriotic and whether as members of this church we are living according to what is expected of us. And everything that is expected of us is, as is in the scriptures. Having been a member and a daughter in this house, I can assure you that every doctrine that is taught in this church is based on the Bible. We have, we have the bulletin. The cover page, Upper Jew, our church is well defined. By the way, how many are members of this church? What is our church slogan? We are members, Sindio. How church riotic are we? Kama ata slogan hatujui na iko hapa mbele. Apo chini ya logo imeandikwa nini? Yes, Church of Choice. So, kama we ni mgeni na uko hapa siku ya leo, you are in the right place. And if you have recently relocated to Zimmerman, this is the best place to be. Usitafte kanisa ingine umefika. Then, what is our church motto? As this IKZ. Kuna member, sama kuna wale wameamua ku left as we continue. <laughs> Our church motto is a ministry on time, based on Luke chapter 4, verse 18, which gives our church the big five agenda. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, Luke 4, 18. Because he has appointed me to, big agenda number one, preach the gospel to the poor. Number two, heal the brokenhearted. Number three, proclaim liberty to the cap captives. Number four, Recovery of sight to the blind, and number five, set at liberty those who are oppressed. As a member of this church, you are supposed to embrace the big five agenda of this church. As a member of, as a citizen of Kenya, you are supposed to embrace the big four agenda, which was rolled out by His Excellency the President, Uhuru Kenyatta. So we have the big four for the country, and we have the big five for this church, which makes us a ministry on time because of the big five agenda. Now, why are we a ministry? Ephesians 4.11 tells us that it's God who has given us the ministry. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. And I want to pause a little bit and get to that. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And I'm using my hand very intentionally. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The apostle, you'll see the thumb. When I mentioned the apostle, I said I raised my thumb. The apostle is the carrier 
of the vision and the mission of the church. That's why ako hapo chini, unaona amebeba hawa watu wote. So is this mama vizuri, hawa watu wote wamemfinya. That's why he appears to be lower than the other fingers. And in this church we have an apostle who is our bishop. He carries the vision and the mission of the church. And he spends most of his time in prayer for all these other ministers. It's only the thumb that can touch the tip of every other finger. If you have a hand like mine, it's only the thumb that can touch the tip of every other finger. So it's only the apostle who can minister to all these others. He takes care of the needs of all the other ministers. That's the apostle. He appears to be lower than the others because he bears the weight of the vision and the mission of the ministry. Then the pointing finger, the pointing finger is the prophet, the one who points people to what God is saying. The, in the Old Testament, whoever said, thus says the Lord, that was the prophet. So his work is to point people to where God wants them to be. Then the longest finger or the tallest finger is the outgoing person who is the evangelist. His duty is to go out, bring people to the house of God so that they can be ministered to by someone who is married to the church who is the pastor. That's the ring finger. So the evangelist goes out and brings people to the church so that they are ministered to by the pastor. The pastor is always found within the church so that he can minister to the needs of the people. The physical, the spiritual, the emotional needs of the people is the work of the pastor. Now what the pastor cannot handle, he will give to the teacher. The teacher is the smallest finger. The smallest finger will reach where the other fingers cannot reach. I know we have coronavirus, natumeambio to see guza guze uso sana. But when you feel itchy, uko kwa maskia, uko nyuma, you use this finger. Ama kwa mapua, uko nyuma, you use this finger. So, it is only the teacher who will reach where the pastor may not reach. This believer may have some questions that the pastor may not handle. He'll hand, hand, hand over this person to the teacher who will, who will take care of those questions and issues. Now we have our mission statement. Bado tuko hapa. Na leo tutakuwa na CBC kidogo. Kwa hivyo nikiuliza maswali, nikiwambia musmame mukae, mujue tuko sawa tu tunaendelea na injili. Unajua tumezoea tukisimama ibada imeisha. Tutasimama at some point na ibada hiku kwa alita kwa imeisha. So we are going, next is our vision statement. We are a dynamic, purpose-driven church transforming life. A church that is dynamic means that it is lively, vibrant, self-motivated, and unique. And all those describe our church. So if you are not seeing these, uh, these qualities in our church, then maybe it's because you are not doing what you are supposed to do because we are expected to be dynamic, lively, vibrant, self-motivated, purpose-driven church, transforming lives. Our mission statement is to make Christ known in Kasarani and beyond through evangelism, discipleship, and equipping believers for the ministry. And all that is done in this church. We do evangelism within Kasarani and beyond. We were supposed to have a prison visit we are not having it, but it's the core of this church to visit prisons, to visit hospitals, to visit children's homes within Kasarani and even outside Kasarani. So that's part of our mission statement. The bottom line is to make Christ known through evangelism. Discipleship, we have discipleship classes in this church. We have the school of leaders which equips uh, men and women, brothers and sisters to be leaders, so we major on equipping believers in ministry, and the bottom line is to make Christ known. Our identity, we are located in Zimmerman, we are a cell church, encouraging fellowship with God and each other in small groups. We are guided by fruitfulness, multiplication, and discipleship, which is the Father's vision. 
Now, we are a cell church. We are not a, cell, a church with cells, but we are a cell church. If you remove the cells, this church will not be there. If I say this is a house with mud, you can remove the mud and the house will remain. But if I say this is a mud house, if you remove the mud, there is no house. So this is a cell church. If it was a church with cells, we can remove the cells and remain with the church. But we are a cell church. We are made of cells. If you remove the cells, the church will fall down. Now, why are, what do I mean by that? I want you to assume that all these walls are cells. And I want us to assume that this is one zone. This wall is one zone. Nasio Bethel zone ni iso zingine. Now, one cell is not operating within this zone, name withheld. One cell is not operating, it means you have removed one block, just one block. All the other walls are standing firm. Then, there is one cell that is not operating, meaning there is a gap there. Cindy, what will happen? The whole church is standing, but there is a hole on the wall. It means anything can get in through that hole. The other cells are running, Nazikosawa. It's only one that has left a gap. That one gap, Ineza Tosha Panya, Ineza Tosha Paka, Ineza Tosha Umbwa, Zote zitaingia kwa hii church zikipitia hiyo shimomoja. Then what happens? Zitanza kukimbiza na ukundani. The church will not be at peace because one cell is not operating. So if one cell is not operating, the whole church is affected. Assume now that whole wall collapses. The other walls will not be able to stand because they will follow suit. Because ile uchafu itatoka inje through this wall will get into the entire church. So this is a cell church. Every cell is expected to operate the way it should so that the entire church is strong and firm. So wherever you are, if you are a cell leader, I want to request you to stand. If you are here and you are a cell leader, nimesema leo ni CBC. Thank you. If you are seated and you don't have a cell, write your name and your telephone number on a piece of paper and make sure it reaches any one of these people in the next two minutes. Si tumeona hawa mesmama, kama hakuna yule yako karibu na wewe, just write your name, your telephone number, pale unaishi weka landmark, kama ni nyuma ya church, kama ni area ya cooperative, kama ni wabuti, just write the area where you stay, in the next two minutes, wacha hizo karatasi zifikie hawa. Your name, your telephone number, and where you stay. Just write it on a piece of paper, give it to any of these people or any usher. You will be connected to a cell because this is a cell church. And if you are a member of this church and you are not in a cell, you are that whole. Yenye itatuletea panya hapandani. So please, make sure you get connected to a cell. Thank you, cell leaders. You may sit down. I want to see those papers reaching the cell leaders. So remember, we are a cell church. Now, our core values. Our core values are six. And they are Christ-likeness, according to Philippians 3.10. And we will come back to that and look at Christ-likeness very fast and in detail because you cannot be Christ-like if you don't know Christ. So number one is Christ-likeness according to Philippians 3.10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being, conf uh, being conformed to his death. Number two, our core value number two. And core value is our firm values, things we believe in. Let us look at it the way we pronounce it, ko, in Kiswahili. Don't mind the interpretation. 
we are looking at the pronunciation. Ko, hapa. Sasa tuingie kwa kwa darasa la Kiswahili. I know Angeshi is here na atanikosoa juu na Ezra Shrub. Shetani akikushika ko. Hutaweza kupumua. Ndio watu hupigwa ngeta. Ukose nguvu. Ukimwacha shetani akushike ko ama akupige ngeta atakuwa amekuteka nyara. Atakuwa ame kunyang'anya nguvu. Hautaweza kufanya jambo lolote ama kushiriki huduma inavyotakikana. Hutaweza kufanya ile kazi ambayo umepewa na Mwenyezi Mungu kufanya. Manake shetani atakuwa ame kukaba ko. So usimruhusu shetani akushike ko. Now let's go, go back to English. Our core values. <laughs> we are now in English. Kiswahili tumetumesha maliza. Usiruhusu shetani akushike ko. Hu utaweza kufanya uduma inavyo takikana na vile umeambiwa na mwenyezi mungu. Our core values are the values that we cannot do without. The things that make us strong. Christ-likeness, Christ prayer, fellowship, integrity, accountability, and excellence. Prayer is according to 1 John 5:14 and Psalm 66:19. Fellowship is Hebrews 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And that is one thing that the enemy is really fighting, fellowship. He's fighting fellowship. I remember 31st December 2007, no church held a crossover Kesha. Why? Post-election violence had just started. Today, some people have not gone to church. Why? Because of the coronavirus scare, which is real and is true. But the enemy is fighting fellowship. And God is saying, do not neglect. And the enemy is working very hard to make sure that you neglect. To make sure that you do not get to a place of fellowship. That's what the enemy is fighting. So, tukirudi kwa kiswahili, shetani atajaribu kukushika ko pahali, ndiyo usieze kupumua vizuri, usieze kufanya huduma, your duty is to work very hard to ensure you maintain fellowship with God and with others. So fellowship is very important. Integrity and discipline, how you carry yourself around. Accountability. And Ezekiel 33, 6 says you are the watchman. If you fail to blow the trumpet when danger is coming, then you are the one to carry the blame. So accountability is very important. Uh, the same is also echoed in Romans chapter 3, verse 19. And core value number six is excellence. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue in it, there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Are you meditating on whatever is true? Tangu Friday when that one case of coronavirus was broadcasted, WhatsApp image. Are you forwarding a message that is true? Ask yourself. Is it noble? Is it just? Is it, is it a good report? Are you scaring people or are you encouraging people? Pastor Alice has said we are complying because we are patriotic. We want to do what the government is saying as a church. But whatever you are saying and forwarding, is it true? Is it a good report? Is it a true report? That is what the Bible is encouraging us to meditate upon. So I want us to go back very quickly to Christ-likeness, which is our first core value. And we to nonge English, core value, christ like Ness. And I want us to look at the story of Jesus. And we are going to condense a, th a life of 33 years in the next 10 minutes. 
looking at the life of Christ. And I was looking at it through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each one of them was looking at the life of Christ from, a different, uh, from different angles. Matthew chapter 1 starts with the genealogy of Jesus from Abraham going down up to uh, Joseph and Mary. Mark starts his, uh, his uh, sequence of events from the story of John the Baptist uh, crying in the wilderness that prepare ye the way of the Lord. Luke starts it from the story of Zachariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist. And he carries on with that story until he gets to where Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is born and John the Baptist baptizes Jesus. And John looks at it from the beginning. In the beginning there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And John says in John chapter 1 verse 8 that... He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That one he's speaking of, John the Baptist. And in verse 29 he says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of man. John the Baptist did not, did not want to steal the show because we are told he was not the light. He was there, but the light was coming after him. So when he sees Jesus coming, he steps aside and ushers in Jesus into the scene. And Jesus starts his ministry after he's baptized. So I want us to look at John, the, I mean the book of uh, Luke. And we are going to look at the life of Jesus, 33 years in 10 minutes. So tutaenda mbio sana na kutakuwa na CBC hapo ndani msijali na tutaendelea so chapter 1 uh, there is the announcement of the birth of Jesus uh, of uh, John the Baptist and uh, how Zachariah was in the temple praying and seeking God and the bible records that they were old and his wife Elizabeth was barren and he did not believe that they would ever get a child but as he's praying, an angel appears to him and tells him that his prayers has, have been heard. And uh, John the Baptist is born. And uh, in chapter 1, verse 59, after the eighth day, John the Baptist is taken to, to, uh, is taken to the temple and is dedicated. Uh, that is the age where they used to circumcise their little boys. But he is taken to church and he is given the name John. And the people around Elizabeth are asking, there is no one in this lineage called John, but that's the name that she had been given by the angel of the Lord, and Zechariah agrees with her, and the child is called John. Then in chapter 2, we see the birth of Jesus Christ, and just like John, after the eighth day, he is presented into the temple, just like what happens here, we dedicate children, we don't baptize them. So it's all in line with the word of God. Jesus was dedicated. John the Baptist was dedicated. Uh, then in chapter 2, verse 41, it was a tradition of the parents of Jesus to come to Jerusalem, and they come with him. And when they are going back, Jesus remains behind and they realize that they are not with Jesus, and they come back for him. And one thing that Jesus asked them in verse, chapter 2, verse 49 is, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And in verse 51, when they are going back, then he went, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them, but his mother kept all these things in her heart. Jesus, despite being the born king, he was still subject to his earthly parents, and the Bible records he was subject to them. But Mary was realizing that there is something about Jesus, and that's why we are told she kept all these things in her heart. Then in chapter 3, we are told of the preaching of John the Baptist, and right now he's not saying prepare ye the way for the Lord. He's saying repent and be baptized because Jesus has come. And so in the same chapter 3, we see Jesus being baptized. In chapter 4, the devil comes and uh, Jesus is tempted. And the big part that is tempted of Jesus is his sonship. His sonship. And I want to dwell a little bit on sonship. 
Because he's saying, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, why don't you do this? Jesus knew he's the son of God, but he could not do some things to prove it. Just like vile tumeweke wa maji pale inje. Mtu atauliza kama sisi ni wa Kristo, mbona tunanawa si tumefunikwa na damu ya Yesu? Eh? And you walk in without washing your hand because you are a man of faith. And your faith is big. Hata mustard seed ni ndogo yako labda ni avocado ama mango. And you don't want to wash your hands. That is what Satan was testing here. The sonship of Jesus. And I'm sure you've heard that question many times. Kama we ni mkristo, mbona? Kama we ni mkristo, mbona? The enemy is trying to... Yes. He's trying to make you doubt. Enyewe? Jesus would have easily said, yes, I'm the son of God. We, you stone, can you become some bread? Na kule, to prove I'm the son of God. But he didn't. Because he knew. Nimeokoka, I don't need to prove it. Just look at me. I'm the son of God. I don't need to prove it. No, what hinders sonship? Number one, an independent spirit. When we are told to do this, you feel at a mini mejazu na roho. My faith see kama ya bishop mustard seed yangu ni avocado seed. So I can also, I'm also born again like him. You know, independent spirit. Kama watu wanaenda crusade, where saizo ndi uko prayer and fasting uko ndani ya church. You are not doing anything sinful, but you are independent. You want to do things on your own. Lack of patience. You want to go very fast. Bishop akikwambia story ya hii church kule walianzia uko juu kwa nyumba ya, ya ngurue. You don't want to go through that. Unataka uamuke leo na kesho ujenge cathedral. You don't have that patience. Then refusing correction. That one will hinder your sonship. Then what are the qualities of a good son? You adjust to the way you follow. Don't think that we umesoma kuliko baba yako, so unezafanya vitu mzuri, ama unezafanya zaidi kumuliko. Adjust to the way you follow, because your father has been there before you. Number two, submit. Be available. Honor your natural father as well. The fact that umekuja church ukapata spiritual parents does not mean that you disobey your biological or physical parents. Remember, they are still your parents, whether they are born again or not. Honor your natural parents. Now, you are driven by the father's heart, not hand. You are driven by the father's heart, not hand. Look at what the father wants you to do, where the father wants you to go, not what can I get from the father, what can the father give me. If you want to be a good son, look at the father's heart, his desire for you, what he wants you to do, where he wants you to go, not his hand, what he can give you or what you can get from him. Never break ties if you are a true son. Ukikosana na anko yako nyumbani, do you change your last name? Uh, let me give an example of, of Joy Kimani. Anenda anakosana na anko ama auntie ama one of the sisters. Anasema sasa mi si Joy Kimani. Sasa mi nimeachana na hii family. No, you sort out your issues. Hakuna nyumba haina issues. You sort out your issues and you remain home. You don't change your second name because you have... Uh, had some disagreements. So you never break the ties. Now, uh, a good son sides with the father and they speak the same language. Then what do you benefit from being a good son? You get counsel, you get training, you get an identity, you are mentored by the father, you are corrected by the father, and according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, you get long life. And as I end that part of sonship, I want to ask you, are you sonable? Are you sonable? We are all sons, regardless of gender. Are you sonable? 
So in chapter 5, we see Jesus starting to call his disciples, and he finds these guys who have been fishing all night. And he starts preaching in one of the boats. Then after that, he tells them, launch again, and they launch, and they get a bumper fish. And I always say, Jesus comes from where I came from. Because atujawa yona akiwa pahali akivuna waru. He, he's always pali kuna samaki. Even when he was feeding the multitude, sali wapati anini? Samaki na So, mimi na yesu? So, after that, and by the way, alikuwa natembeaga tu pali, karibu na maji. That's why he walked on water. So, after that, he tells them, you will no longer catch fish, you will catch men. That's what he tells his disciples. And they leave their fish and they follow him. So we continue still in chapter 5. Jesus healed a man with leprosy. He heals a paralyzed man who was brought down through the roof. He was preaching and it was so full that they had to lower that man from the roof, and he calls a tax collector to join him as he's walking with his disciples. Then he's questioned about fasting, and he's being told, how come your disciples don't fast? And uh, the disciples of John the Baptist were, fighting, were fasting. And in verse 35 and 35, he says, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. So because he was with his disciples, walikuwa sawa. But after he left, he said now, sasa mupambane na halienyu. You'll need to pray, you'll need to fast. But when he was with them, no one would challenge him because he would sort out all of their issues. Chapter 6, the Pharisees are questioning him about the Sabbath. And he says, the son of man is also Lord of the Sabbath, when he's doing so many things on the Sabbath day, he's told the Son of God is also the Lord of the Sabbath. And he, 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 overcome, he overcomes that question. We don't come to church because it is Sunday. You can have church in your house. You can have church as you walk. You can have church as you work. So don't let you see your Sunday hauta omba. You see on Sunday how to chukua Holy Communion. You can do it in your office. You can do it in your house. You can do it anywhere. Don't be ruled by the Sabbath, but rather walk over the Sabbath. So in the same verse 6, Jesus is healing a man with a paralyzed hand, and it's still on the Sabbath day. And the, the, the guys there are not happy, and they are planning now what do we do? with this man and he's continuing and he's teaching and he's healing then he's telling he's telling his disciples in verse 20 to 26 he says blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you that is to incite you and cast you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake what do you when all men speak well of you for so did did their fathers to the false prophets. So when people are talking evil about you for the sake of Christ, he says you are blessed. But the, when they are talking all good about you, he says woe unto you. So be very careful why you are being praised. Are you being praised because of what you have done in Christ or are you being praised because you are conforming with the world? And that's what the message Jesus is trying to bring out. Then in chapter 7, Jesus is continuing healing and he's healing a Roman officer's servant, the man who came and told him, I'm a man with authority, and when I tell this man go, he goes, and this one come, he comes. And Jesus sees that faith and sends a word of healing to the servant. And as they are walking, he meets a procession of a son of a widow, and he has compassion on them, and he raises that son. And John the Baptist is wondering, and he sent some of his disciples to Jesus. And in chapter 7, verse 20, the disciples are asking what John has sent them to ask. Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? 
and in verse 21, and at that very hour, he cured many infirmities. He did not answer that question when he was asked, Niwewe ama tunangojia mwingine. He says, he cured many infirmities, afflictions and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. He is not saying he is the Messiah. He is just doing things. And then mumwambie vile mumeona. Ajijazie kama ni mimi ama si mimi. Then in chapter 8, we are told, uh, I, th I, I don't know if we can have it very fast on the screen, of the women who accompanied Jesus. And at this point, situlielewana ni CBC. So I want the ushers to bring the baskets and position the baskets somewhere as we read this. Ushers, please. We are doing CBC as we continue with the service. The women who accompanied Jesus, Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmity. And some of them are named. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. That's one of them. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, steward. Susanna and many others who provided him with their substance. There were many women. Very few are mentioned. But all of them are important. And the Bible records that many others who provided for him for their substance, they believed in his ministry. And so they provided. May, maybe food when Jesus was very tired with his disciples or anything that they did. But the Bible record, records that they provided him for him from their substance. Do we have our substance today? Do we believe in the gospel of Jesus today? Do we believe that the word of God is true? Do we believe that this ministry is based on the word of God and it is preaching the truth and it is going forward, evangelizing the word of Jesus Christ? If you believe it, get your offering into your hand. Whatever you want to give, just get it because we want to demonstrate that we believe in the gospel of Jesus and we want to honor him with our substances like these ladies. Not all of them are named. Very few names are there. But all of them were important. La last, week, last week on Sunday, I normally run the Beyond Zero Marathon and several other marathons. And I was not named Wakisoma News. <laughs> But I felt good when they were being shown there. By the way, I was able to get a medal. So, if you have a picture, you can get a medal. If you have number one, I was somewhere in Katikati. But, same with these ladies. All of them were walking with Jesus, and not all of them were mentioned but all of them are important because they participated in what Jesus was doing and they believed in the gospel of Jesus and they supported the, the gospel of Jesus. So because we believe in the gospel of Jesus and we believe in this ministry and we believe in this church, very fast, just go to the basket near you and give whatever you are giving. Please walk quietly because I'll be, I'll be talking as you walk. So musianze kusalimiana, ni kuweka sadaka, mukiendaga. So Jesus continues with the parable of the sower and the parable of the light. You cannot light a lamp and put it under. And thus, in the same chapter 8, he is calming the storm when the disciples were very much afraid. And he also heals a demon-possessed man who used to live in the cemetery. Jesus comes and heals him. At the same time, he also heals the woman who had an issue of blood, and he heals, he also raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. Then in chapter 9, we are told that Jesus gets his 12 disciples, and he gives them power and authority over demons, and uh, power and authority to cure diseases, 
and he sent them out to preach the gospel. And we are, when they come back, that's the time when Jesus feeds the multitudes. And I said, because we come from the same place, he multiplied a lot of fish and, and uh, bread and gave it to them. And in chapter 9, verse 18, it happened that as he was alone praying, that his disciples joined, joined him and asked, and he asked them saying, who do the crowd say I am? Jesus wanted to know if his disciples, just like John the Baptist, are sure of whom he is, they know whom he is. And uh, the disciples give him various answers, and at the end of, the, of uh, th that uh, interaction, uh, he reveals, uh, it revealed through Peter that Jesus is Christ. And that's the time he starts speaking about his suffering and his death. And he takes Peter, John, and James up the mountain, and he prays, and again he speaks about his death. And when they are ready to come down, the father affirms him once more and says, this is my beloved son, hear him. And the following day when they are coming down the mountain, he meets a man who has a child who is demon-possessed and Jesus heals him. And Jesus speaks again of his death and he says to his disciples, let these words sink down into your ears for the son of man is about to be betrayed in the hands of man. He's talking about the betrayal that, is about to, that he is about to face. And he's telling his disciples to sink these things deep down into their hearts. Then in chapter 10, Jesus sends out the 72. And he says, behold, I send you out as lamb among wolves. He gives instructions on what to do with the household and receives them and what, what to do with the households that will receive them and the households that will reject them. Jesus gives them instructions on what to do to do with them. And once they go and they are victorious, they come back and, and they are reporting to Jesus and says, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. And Jesus tells them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And when he says, I saw Satan falling down, like lightning from heaven. Immediately after that, he says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Because he knows that the devil is now down here, and he needs to, to, he needs to empower these people on how to deal with serpents and scorpions, because they are down here with us, and he gives, gives them authority to trample over them. But he cautions them, nevertheless, in verse 20 of chapter 10, do not rejoice on this. Do not rejoice because even the demons are subject to you. Do not rejoice because you can step over serpents and scorpions, but rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. He's giving them the bigger picture. These other things are added advantages, but the major thing is rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. And for the first time, the Bible uh, records in verse 21 of chapter 10 that Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. And he says a prayer of thanksgiving to the Father. And he tells his disciples, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. And today I'm telling you, blessed are the ears that hear the things you hear. Because the life of Jesus, there is nothing as interesting as, as it. Then in chapter 11, Verse 1, now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And I feel this disciple was not being genuine. Yani tufundishe kuomba, ju John alikuwa nafundisha disciples wake kuomba. Si useme tuwe nye sijui kuomba. Usianze kutoe excuse ya mbali, ati teach us to pray as John used to teach his disciples. But anyway, I want, what I want us to note here is, he did not say, teach us how to pray. He said, teach us to pray. If I, te, if I ask you, teach me how to drive a car, utanza kuniambia unashika steering, unakanyaga, hii ni mafuta, hii ni brake, hii ni clutch, ukitaka kuenda mbele, unafanya hivi, ukitaka kuenda rivers, fanya hivi, you are teaching me how to drive. 
But if I tell you, teach me to drive, tutaenda kwa gari, utaka kwa passenger, nitaka kwa driver, then you'll teach me literally what to do. So they are not asking how to pray. Teach us to pray. And I want to believe that as they were saying this, they were all kneeling down as Jesus used to kneel. Not just telling them, you should be doing this. I want to believe they are doing it literally. He was doing it with them. And then, after he has taught them to pray, he continues with many teachings. And I want us to jump to chapter 22 and 23, where the plot begins. And Jesus agrees to betray Jesus. And Jesus partakes of the Last Supper with his disciples. He predicts he predict that Peter will deny him. Then he goes up to the mountain to pray. And he is arrested, of course, with Judas and his friends. And Peter is somewhere, an outer motto. And he has forgotten that he was told, you will deny me three times. And you know, there are some things as Christians you do, then unakumbuka umeokoka. So maybe alikuwa naota moto, akasikia, oh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, huh? Ulikuwa nao. Ah, no, I was not with him. Then anaota moto, oh, hallelujah. You know, there are some things that you just say. Now, these people are wondering, this one was walking with him. And he denies Jesus three times as he, as he had been told. And Jesus is brought to Pilate. And Jesus, after Pilate, he is sent to Herod. And after Herod, he is sent, uh, he is sent back to Pilate. And the Bible records in chapter 23, verse 12, that that very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other. For previously, they had been at enmity with, this, with each other. Madui, wanakuwa marafiki, just because they want to frustrate Jesus. And if it has happened to you, Usijali, it happened to Jesus, and he overcame, therefore you shall also overcome. And so after all that, Jesus is sentenced to death. And in chapter 23, verse 32, there were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. At his worst point, at his weakest point, he said, forgive. He still had in him the heart to forgive. When he would have said, he would have cast them. He would have called fire from heaven. But he is at the cross hanging and bleeding very badly with a thorn, a, a crown of thorns, he still has the energy to say, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. Is that what you can say at your worst point when your employer has given you a termination letter? Can you forgive them? Can you speak a word of blessing on them? Can you speak something good about them or will you curse them? Jesus at his worst and weakest point he said, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Then one, one of the criminals says to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly, today I say, you will be with me in paradise. This man had not served Jesus. He was not a disciple. He was a criminal. And he was hanging there because he's a criminal. But Jesus still had time to bring salvation. Why? He still held the big five agenda to bring, to set the captives free. He was still holding on to the big five agenda and he still had to set that captive free who was hanging next to him on the cross. And between the sixth hour and the ninth hour, the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn into two. Jesus cried, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He committed himself to the best place he can. And I want to ask you, what is your first go-to place when you are at your worst point? Do you take your phone to call your best friend? Do you take to Facebook or Twitter? Where do you go to? What is your first go-to place when you are at your lowest moment? Jesus said, into your hands I commit my spirit. Where do you commit your issues when you are 
hard pressed and when you are at your worst and at your lowest. And one person called Joseph of Arimathea comes and takes Jesus' body. He asks for permission from Pilate, takes Jesus' body, buries him, and on the third day, Jesus rises from the dead. Day one was a day of pain and agony and bleeding and crying. Day two was a day of silence. Nothing happened and they thought it was over. And if I remember what our preacher told us, uh, I think it was last week, he said it does not end there. Flip the pages. How many remember that message? It does not end when Jesus is dead and Joseph of Arimathea goes and gets his body and buries it. Day two is silent and Satan thinks he has victory. He thinks he has managed to shake a great kingdom. But on day three, Jesus rises up from the dead and he appears to many and he still talks to many and he blesses many. And on the last day before he goes up, he is with his disciples. And in, chap uh, in chapter 24, verse 50 and, and 51, and he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. That's the victory. So when you are talking of Christ-likeness, we have gone through his life in a very short time and I want to encourage you to read the Gospels if you want to know the real life of Jesus and what he went through before conception to conception to his childhood, to his ministry, to his death, to his rising, and to his reigning. All you have to do is to read the word of God. Do not neglect the fellowship of sisters and brothers. I put it to you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, men and brethren, the foundation of this church is Jesus. Christ-likeness is key. And if you are Christ-like, all these other core values will not be a problem to you. You will not have a problem in prayer, in fellowship, in integrity, in accountability, and in excellence. But the bottom line is Christ-likeness. And I want to ask if you are here and you don't know Christ, you've never given your life to Christ, you've only heard of him, you only know about him, you are a member of this house, you are not a child of this house, you are not even a child of God, you've never given your life to Christ, just rise up and come to the front so that as we close, you'll be part of this great family. If you're here, you've never given your life to Christ, this is your time to share the goodness. That's why Paul said, and uh, we, we read it in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. His life before conception, his conception, everything is unique. His death, his resurrection, everything about him is unique. And if you wish to walk with him and be Christ-like, the only thing you have to do is to give, to give your life to him and it shall be well with you. And these brothers and sisters will be, able, will be ready to walk with you through the journey of being like Christ, which is one of our core values in this church. May God bless you and keep you and do you good. Amen. Amen.